Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we will look at a very sharp and aggressive line which contains many traps in it. So without any delay, let's get right into it. This line occurs in the Italian game and is also called the Max Lang attack. It starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, castling, knight f3, and here comes the starting point of the Max Lang attack with d4. Now here black has three choices. Black can either take with this pawn, black can take the pawn with the knight, or black can also take with the bishop. Out of all these three options, only bishop captures d4 is the correct way. Now before we look at bishop captures d4, first we need to look at knight captures d4 and pawn captures d4. So now let us look at knight takes d4. Now knight takes d4 is probably the worst option because now white can simply play knight takes e5 and we are already attacking the pawn on f7. Now here black can try knight e6 but here many black players make the mistake of castling. Because now white can play bishop to e3 and the, we are already attacking the knight and it has to go to e6 to protect the bishop on c5. But after bishop takes e6, bishop takes e3, bishop takes f7 with a check and let's say rook takes f7. We can simply play knight takes f7 and let's say king takes f7, pawn takes f3. We are an exchange up and this position should be really really solid for white. Hence knight captures d4 is not the option black wants to play. Now let's look at the most common option which is e captures d4 and I have seen this many many times in my own games when I play this line that players often play e captures d4 in this situation. But here we can play e5 and here black has a lot of choices. The best move here is d5. But many players also tend to move their knight in this position. But moving the knight is not a really great choice. Let's look at all of these lines in detail. So now let's look at knight g8 which by itself looks like a very bad move. Here we can play knight g5 and let's say knight captures e5 thinking that we are protecting this pawn as well as attacking this bishop but here we can simply play rook e1 and we are pinning this knight and let's say f6 and we can still come knight f7 because the knight is pinned. And this is simply a winning position for white. And instead of knight e5 if he tries knight h6 to stop this then we can play rook e1 let's say castles queen d3 attacking this pawn g6 queen h3 king g7 and here we can sacrifice the queen so that king h6 knight f7 check king g7 bishop f6 check now bishop h6 check is very important because if we directly take the queen, then let's say rook takes d8 and it will be a really really equal position. But we want an advantage. So bishop h6 check, king g8, knight d8 with a check. So king h8, let's say knight f7 check, king g8, knight d6 check, king h8 and we can simply take the rook. And now we simply have more material than black and this should be a really easy winning position for white. So he cannot play knight g8. Let's look at knight e4. Now knight e4 is also a really bad move because we have queen e2 and let's say d5 to protect the knight we simply take and let's say f5 to protect the knight here. We can simply play knight bd2. If you take this pawn I can simply play knight captures e4, f captures e4, queen captures e4 check knight e7 and this position looks equal we have equal material 
but we can play rook e1 let's say h6 because we had a threat of playing bishop g5 attacking it even further so after h6 we can simply give a check king d7 queen captures g7 and let's say a sample line could go a6 bishop e6 check and a6 was important because we had a threat of bishop b5 check so bishop e6 check king c6 knight captures d4 bishop captures d4 for queen captures d4 we simply have two points of advantage and this should be a really good position to play as white so even knight e4 is a really bad choice now what if he plays knight g4 after knight g4 we can play bishop f4 to protect this pawn and let's say if black castles thinking that now his position is good we can simply play h3 knight h6 bishop captures h6 g captures h6 and after c3 and even if black takes takes we can see that we are a pawn down but for a pawn we have a lot of initiative in return because our pieces are well developed his king is pretty weak his pawn structure is pretty bad and this should be winning hence here let's look at now knight h5 which is probably the worst option out of all of the knight moves that i showed you because now we have knight g5 attacking this pawn attacking the knight and if you try something like knight captures e5 then we can play rook e1 again then we have again the same threat because the knight is pinned so d6 knight takes and this is just winning for white so now let's look at the move d5 which is the best option here so here there's a very nice trap which many players fall into which goes after pawn takes knight pawn takes bishop rook e1 check bishop to e6 knight g5 and after let's say queen takes f6 because here black thinks that he is two pawns up and now he will slowly castle this side or maybe this side and his position is pretty solid but here we have the winning blow knight captures e6 f captures e6 and after queen h5 check this bishop cannot be saved because now let's say queen f7 we take and we are a piece up for the rest of the game and it is a really really easy position to convert to a win so that was a really nice trap which occurs after d5 but here black has other options as well for example after takes takes rook e1 check black can play king f8 and in the line where he plays bishop e6 when we play knight g5 he can also play g6 to stop the queen h5 check and this position even if we take take we do not have a queen h5 check but a sample line could go like rook e6, king e7, and let's say rook e1, and the game would continue like this. The engine says it's an equal position, but in practice, if you see, the king is pretty weak. The queen can be easily developed. The knights are coming to attack. In practice, I would say this position is really comfortable for white. So now let's look at the line. Bishop captures d4 many people do not play this line as it just simply gives away the bishop for a knight in the early stage of the game but trust me it is the best move in this variation so here white can continue with knight captures d4 and after knight captures d4 you have a few options of playing f4 knight c3 but if you want to be aggressive and you want all the traps in this line i recommend you play bishop to g5 here if black castles you have a pretty good move f4 because after f4 we simply are threatening to play f captures e5 attacking both the knights at the same time and here many people make the error of playing h6 
because after f takes e5, h takes g5, e takes f6 and now this knight is under attack so it has to move so let's say knight to e6, knight c3 and this position is a really comfortable position for white because we have all the pieces developed we are attacking this king with all the pieces involved and hence if you are playing this as white it should be a really really good position to play a sample line could go like c6 queen h5 and after let's say g captures f6 we can play e5 and after pawn takes we can play bishop d3 threatening to mate here and let's say even if you try to escape we can simply take here and this is mate so this position is simply crushing for white and hence h6 is a really really fatal mistake here black can also try d6 but after f takes e5 d takes e5 knight c3 we are threatening to play knight d5 and if black tries to play h6 to remove the bishop from here it's simply lost because of bishop takes f6 g takes f6 and after queen h5 we are attacking this and if we play let's say king g7 to stop it and after knight d5 we simply have too much attack and black cannot handle it hence here castling would be a really bad mistake by black if he doesn't know how to play properly after that but here black has another choice which is h6 but after h6 we can play bishop h4 after g5 we have a really good move f4 first what happens if it takes our bishop we can simply take this pawn now we are attacking both the knights at the same time so let's say after knight e6 he protects this knight after pawn takes f6 and this position should be a really really good position for white as we can see that all of these pieces are in the last rank and we are gonna get our knights involved and our rook is pretty active our queen is gonna get there his pawn structure is pretty bad and this position hence is a really crushing position for white what if black plays g captures f4 this loses instantly to rook captures f4 because here he cannot play e captures f4 because we can simply take this knight and now this knight cannot be saved let's say even if you try c5 i can simply give a check and after queen e7 bishop f6 queen takes bishop takes rook g8 we can simply play knight c3 and we have all sorts of threats like this we have two pieces for a rook and this position is completely winning for white and black cannot do anything here and here hence black can also try e captures f4 but this simply loses to queen captures d4 and even if we take our bishop we can take with this rook and this knight cannot move otherwise this rook falls and this is again simply winning Alright guys, that's it for today's video. Do try this opening in your own games, it's really fun to play. And in this video, I've only included the main lines and traps that occur in this opening, but I've provided a PGN file below, which includes many other sub variations and sample lines that you can refer to for a better understanding of the opening. Do let me know in the comments how it works out for you. So yeah, I'll see you next time.